This is one of if not the worst writing I've ever seen in anime history. This chapter was just outrageously stupid. I, I don't know what the writers were thinking when they were writing this chapter. I don't know if Kishimoto was really involved in this or if this was Kodashi. I honestly don't know what happened in the writing studio. But what I do know is that this chapter was pretty stupid. I know they like to say that Kishimoto took over at chapter 51 or so but that's pretty hard to believe seeing that this part of this arc of Naruto or Boruto hasn't really closed off yet and what people fail to understand is that a lot of these the things that are happening in, in this chapter or maybe two chapters to come have already been written right maybe it was not drawn or illustrated whatever you want to call it but it was already written right the plot was already written so I find it hard to believe that Kishimoto is really writing what's going on right now because this would have more than likely be done by Kodashi before he left the series. So, you know, they can say whatever they want, but I still think this is Kodashi's work up until we reach the um, time skip, right? That's when I think Kishimoto's work will start to chip in. But it's not to, not a re not really a dig at Kodashi himself because he has been keeping this manga up, right, for the last what two to three years, five years, I don't really know, but the manga is on fire right compared to the anime the anime is trash in my opinion honestly i know you guys might disagree but right the manga has been fire for the last um two years two to three years right so i'm not blaming kadashi saying he's a bad writer but i'm not saying that i don't believe this is kishimoto's work just as yet However, let's just get into the chapter review and stop wasting time on things that don't really matter, alright? So I started off this video talking about how I think this chapter was the worst chapter, right, in anime history. Like the worst writing I've ever seen in manga history, right? And I'm gonna prove that, right? But before we do that, I just wanna let you guys know, I'm just gonna break it down a bit. I just, I don't wanna just go off what I remember and it'll just say random stuff, right? I'm just gonna go panel by panel and, and I'm gonna tell you guys what I think is wrong with the panel, right? Or what happened um, in the sequence that we're shown. So I'm not gonna go through everything because, you know, I might get in trouble legally um, with copyright strikes and so on. So I'm just gonna go through a few panels that I think are really important uh, for you guys to understand where I'm coming from and why I think this is the, the worst, at least the worst chapter in Boto's history, right? As it pertains to consistency, as it pertains to the writing, you know, the plot and everything and how they utilize the characters. So yeah, that's that's basically it. Now, based on what happened in the last chapter, we all know that Koaki is now on the battlefield. Now, Ishiki basically used the link between Naruto and Koaki using the chakra arm to bring Koaki to the battlefield. That's what we know, right? So, continuing from there, we see Koaki on the battlefield and Naruto is telling Koaki that he needs to run, right? He needs to get away from Ishiki so that he doesn't implant a new karma seal on Koaki. And Ishiki is not really having enough of it, so Ishiki then punches Naruto so hard that the Baryan mode just disappears. And this is the first problem I have with this chapter. And you know, this is really early on, so you guys know that this is not good, right? Now, instead of allowing Naruto to get punched, why didn't Sasuke switch himself with Ishiki? Now, not switch himself with Naruto and take the punch. I said switch himself with Ishiki. You know, why didn't he just switch place with, with Ishiki so that Ishiki would punch the ground somewhere, right? Instead of punching Naruto. Sasuke knows that Naruto is their only chance, right, to win, to win this fight against Ishiki. So why not help Naruto out during the battle, right? And, you know, everyone's gonna say that, you know, Sasuke knows that he's outmatched and Naruto needs to handle this fight. But you can at least provide assistance, right? You see Naruto's gonna get a deadly punch. Switch him out. Right, switch out, switch out Naruto with a rock or just switch places with Ishiki so that Ishiki would punch somewhere instead of punching Naruto. Instead you just allowed Naruto to get punched and now Baryan mode is gone. Your only chance of winning the fight is now gone. And I don't want anyone to come at me and say that, okay, Sasuke was just tired because he didn't have enough chakra. I'm sick and tired of that excuse, bro. And that's not even valid here since Sasuke literally uses the ability in the next panel to save Kawaki, and that's another problem I have with this chapter. This right here is the dumbest panel in the entire 
chapter. Like instead of switching himself with Ishiki and teleporting Kawaki away or at least try to aid him in getting away with his speed right because Sasuke is obviously faster than Kawaki and if he lifts Kawaki up and tries to run away with him he'll actually get farther away from Ishiki than Kawaki would do on his own right so instead of switching himself with Ishiki and helping Kawaki get away Sasuke decides to switch places with Kawaki and just gets choked out by Ishiki for literally no reason. Like why would he do this? This has to be the dumbest writing I've ever seen. Like why would you switch places with the person on the receiving end of getting damaged? Why didn't you just switch places with Ishiki so that Ishiki would be farther away from Kawaki and then you could at least try to use your powers to teleport Kawaki to another dimension or at least if you don't have enough chakra to do that or if you're too weak or if you don't have enough time you just aid him in getting away like use your chidori lightning whatever and put it around your body and you know speed up yourself and grab Kawaki and run like it's liter literally that simple but instead you're gonna switch places with Kawaki and just get choked out for no reason at all right like that has to be the dumbest shit I've ever seen in any manga at all man and it just pissed me off i'm not really a sasuke fan right and when it comes down to sasuke versus naruto or sasuke versus a lot of people right i'll say that they'll win because i'm not really a fan of sasuke's character and i think a lot of plot armor has helped sasuke in the original naruto series but what they're doing to sasuke in both like that's just unbelievable and not necessary to be honest like even if you hate sasuke's character you have to look at this objectively and say that this is just straight up bullshit right what they're doing literally doesn't make any sense at all and if you have even one brain cell that's ticking in your head you'd understand that this doesn't make sense trust me and you know i just talked about sasuke having plot armor in the original series and he still has it here to some extent because conveniently sasuke has a smoke bomb that can block the visual of the byakugan for a few seconds which we have never heard of before right so kawaki basically ran away and sasuke then tells him to throw the smoke bomb that will block um, ishiki's vision because ishiki tried to use the byakugan to find kawaki right and just all of a sudden Sasuke has a bomb that can block his vision and instead of actually looking behind the damn rock Ishiki flies up into the air and starts panicking as if Kawaki could have gone anywhere but behind the rock like since it's like the only structure in the entire area like what the fuck am I reading like it literally doesn't make sense like I'm trying my best to understand it here I'm not trying to be difficult I'm not trying to be hard but what the fuck am I reading right this is literally, if you look at the, the, the panel, right, that's literally the only rock in the entire area. And you're going to tell me that you're Ishiki and you, you saw this dude throw a smoke bomb, right? It can only cover like a small area, to be honest. So you can literally say that, okay, it didn't go here, it didn't go left, it didn't go right, it didn't go like up or down. All you have to do is go around the damn smoke bomb. And you'll see him like he's literally right there behind the only rock in the entire panel and you're gonna tell me that you're gonna start panicking like Kawaki just teleported to another dimension or something like it literally just doesn't make any sense but with the few brain cells the writers awarded Ishiki he decides to stomp on Naruto and use him as a way to lure Kawaki out and I gotta say that this scene was pretty brutal and you can see the amount of pain Naruto is in considering what he went through with the new Baryan mode which was supposed to end his life. So he was in pain before that and now Ishiki is basically just stomping on him from literally um, in the sky. He just drops into his stomach and literally creates a crater in the ground, right? And he's just stomping on him on the ground. And it's just pretty brutal. And this reminded me of the um, Android 13 versus Goku fight back in the day when DBZ actually made sense. You know, I, rem I remember Android 13 um, doing the same thing to Goku when he was using Goku's stomach as a trampoline. Like he literally jumped from a cliff into Goku's stomach. Like Co Goku was laying on the ground like he was beating the shit out of him, right? And he just jumped off a cliff and jumped into Goku's stomach and Goku was literally screaming like a child, bro. He was, he was crying his eyes out. Like I've never seen Goku in so much pain. Like it was literally brutal, trust me. And you know, I remember that and I'm looking at this and, and I'm saying that like, he... Um, Kodashi or you know Kishimoto 
Um, he must have gotten inspired by that scene and used it here and changed it up a bit. Um, but trust me, it was not pleasant. And with Naruto, it seems as if, you know, that stomp completely shut off his, his um, chakra points or basically killed Koroma um, since Kawaki's chakra arm just fell off upon impact. So we'll see the ramifications of this Baryan mode in the next chapter, hopefully. But yeah, it's not really looking good for Kuruma, to be honest, since Naruto is really alive. He is not really showing any signs of him dying. So, you know, as I theorized in my last video, I think Kuruma really took the brunt of this new mode. And uh, we might not be able to see uh, Kuruma anymore. He might, you know, be gone. But yeah, I think we'll get a little scene with Naruto interacting with Kuruma before he dies. Um, it might be Naruto just telling them what happens or it will happen in the next chapter like real time so uh, yeah we'll just have to wait and see. Now Ishiki then threatens to kill Naruto if Kawaki doesn't come out and just before the last second right Kawaki comes out with the chakra arm in his hand you know and you know before this happened Kawaki was basically thinking about what happened uh, when he was with Ishiki or Jigen how Jigen treated him whenever he hid from Ishiki um so yeah it was it, it was a really touching scene you can see that this kid actually went through a lot right and he started to remember naruto and all the good things naruto did for him and that really you know gave him courage to basically stand up for naruto and you know you, you just love to see because you know what had what happened and i think this is a, this is the reason a lot of people hated boruto in the um beginning i can say i'm one of those people you know how the new generation treated naruto not really the new generation but boruto himself right he didn't respect naruto and he didn't really appreciate the affection naruto showed towards him and just really pissed naruto fans off right because you know we know where naruto is coming from and you can't say that you know boruto doesn't really know and i understand that but you know you know and you're watching and you're like jesus christ you know do you know what this dude went through to get here and this is how you're treating him like i understand why naruto fans feel the way they feel when they see boruto treating naruto a certain way right so yeah to see a character actually appreciating the efforts uh, Nar um, naruto goes through to ensure that everybody you know stays safe and to ensure that everybody feels loved um as one within the um in the lead village i um, mean really you know puts everything into perspective you know it might jump up a little more hate for the character but i gotta say like you know i don't really hate boruto any uh, anymore i didn't really hate the character i just disliked him you know based on his attitude but they have really reformed the boruto character right and um i think that was the plan from the beginning so you know it is what it is and i think it all worked out so yeah i'm not going to really waste any more time on that um, Ishiki then rushes in right and hugs Kawaki and it was pretty creepy he's basically hugging Kawaki telling him that you know he's worthless and he's nothing but a vessel and telling him that his love for Naruto is basically what led Ishiki to him right because you know that you know Ishiki used the link between the chakra arm to basically teleport Kawaki to the battlefield and he's basically rubbing that in right and letting Kawaki know that this love you feel for the seventh Okage and this love he felt for you is what put you in this position today and it's completely worthless right he's basically telling him that he made a big mistake you know you know having this affection for the seventh okage and it's gonna lead to his death and whatever right you know the typical villain monologue like love is weakness blah 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 you know and then he proceeds to implant the karma mark on kawaki which seemingly worked up until ishiki started to fade away and so does the karma mark he placed on kawaki Another Kawaki then emerges from the same rock and reveals to Ishiki that the Kawaki he placed the Karma Seal on was a clone. And just like that the clone disappears. Kawaki then bids farewell to Ishiki and proceeds to stomp him to dust. Which was a stupid decision which I will explain in a second. Now the most controversial scene that has been making the runs on the internet happened where Boroshiki slips in and destroys Sasuke's Renegon with a kunai while he was questioning Naruto about his new form. This scene was pretty damn stupid in my opinion but it could also work. Let me explain. But before we get into that, let's talk about the scene where Ishiki didn't realize that Kawaki was a clone, right? He didn't realize that he placed the Karma Seal on a clone. That's literally on believable it literally makes no sense i mean ishiki has a biakugan a biakugan that is activated it's not just the biakugan in his eye and he's not really using it it's literally activated he activated it just a panel ago when he was looking for kawaki and i don't remember him deactivating the biakugan right so you're telling me 
that you're looking for a person, right? And they suddenly appear and your Byakugan just stops working, right? The Byakugan should be able to distinguish between a shadow clone on it and a real person. That, that's what it was literally able to do since the beginning of the Naruto series. So I don't really understand what happened here. Is it that he was just too excited and he didn't really check, he didn't really understand how to use his powers? It just doesn't make any sense. And I recall a similar scene happening in Naruto Shippuden where, you know, Naruto basically trick Kaguya in the same way right you know when Naruto gave his shadow clone the Chusiken orbs to trick Kaguya into thinking that it was the real Naruto and Kaguya killed that clone thinking that she killed Naruto and then Naruto just attacked Kaguya right so that scene didn't really make sense to me either but what I can say is that I think I can give that scene a pass because Naruto at that point was able to create shadow clones that were that were basically lifelike, right? They they bled, you know, they got tired, they recharged chakra. They were basically another Naruto. So I could see where Naruto was able to create a shadow clone that could mimic a living and breathing Naruto. But Kawaki, who just learned how to do the shadow clone jutsu, and he said this in this very same chapter, he was barely able to make this shadow clone. Right, he was barely able to make this shadow clone, right? So how is he able to create a perfect shadow clone that could mimic a living, breathing person that could trick the Byakugan, right? It literally makes no sense. And this is what I'm talking about. Like you're trying to push something forward, right? You're trying to push something in your story and you're just doing like other incomplete garbage you're not really trying to make it work you're not trying to make it make sense you're just like okay this is what i want to happen so i'm just gonna make it happen i don't care if it works or if it makes sense i'm just gonna do it right and i'm not the smartest person right but i feel like the smartest person in the room when i'm reading shit like this right um it just doesn't make any sense to me i think i could have done way better like trust me i'm not really shitting on the writers i think they've done a great job up until now but you know recently in the last few chapters I, i'm seeing a lot of ass pulls here like a lot of shit that has been happening that literally makes no sense it's like they're trying to say okay you know what we made this guy too fucking op so what we're gonna do is just do some shit and we're just gonna kill him like similar situation to madara what happened to madara in naruto shippuden right you know they made this the character too op that they had no idea how to kill the character so they just came with an ass pull kaguya right so I think it's a similar situation here. I think it's just sad that this is the state of the Boruto manga, to be honest. You know, if they can explain what happened there, fine. But if not, this is just, you know, other garbage, to be honest. Now, I want to talk about Sasuke losing his Renegon to Boroshiki. You know, this is this is a really stupid scene, to be honest. And I think it's the most important scene in the chapter, seeing that um, this is a character basically losing one of his greatest abilities. He's basically just a regular Uchiha right now, right? He's not the strongest Uchiha. I don't think he was in the first place. I still think Madara Uchiha is stronger than Sasuke, adult Sasuke, you know. That's up for debate, but that's what I feel. But yeah, I mean, this dude just lost his Renegon. Like, how is he going to compete in Boruto? Like, if you're not even competing with the Renegon, how are you going to compete without it? And I see a lot of jokes on the internet. I think um, Naruto explained me the joke. He said that, um, yeah, I think it's fine. You know, why does he need a Renegon? Like, he barely has chakra. So, you know, Momoshiki is just helping him out, right? He's just taking away that burden from Sasuke. And I think it's funny, but it's actually true. Like, this dude has the Renegon and he's barely, he's barely using the powers of the Renegon. He's like the worst user of the Renegon to date in the entire series. He doesn't use the abilities and he rarely uses the Renegon abilities. He's always running low on chakra for some reason. Yet in the um, Naruto Shippuden in the war arc, he was constantly spamming this Renegon. But in Boruto, where I would assume this dude would have expanded his chakra reserves, right? It's like they got they, they got smaller for some reason. I don't know what happened here, but Sasuke has been severely nerfed. And you know, you're in this fight, right? And let's say it was there and he didn't really sense Ishiki coming. I mean, Boroshiki. Like, you have the ability to switch places, right? Use the damn ability. And I don't want anyone to come at me saying that, oh, Sasuke is running low on chakra. 
This dude has literally been doing nothing the entire fight. He's just there spectating, watching Naruto fight Ishigi. This dude should have chakra in abundance. And I know that they fought Jigen just a few days ago, but they had time to recharge. Both of them had time to recharge chakra. And Sakura basically healed Sasuke and gave him chakra. So this dude should have a lot of chakra. This dude hasn't been doing anything the entire fight, but I think he took a few hits in the first half. He didn't use any chakra based attacks. Maybe he used Shidori once in the battle and then he used the switch place in ju the switch place jutsu, whatever you want to call it, one time to save Kawaki. And you're telling me that he has no chakra again? Man, if if that is the case, I think he should have just stayed home, man. Honestly, I don't need to. I don't mean to make jokes or anything like that. Uh, but he should have just stayed home. He's literally doing nothing on the battlefield. Why is he here? Like, if you're gonna be there with the damn Renegon and not use it, he should have just given the Renegon to Naruto, right? Just give the Renegon to Naruto. God damn it! Like Naruto would have utilized the Renegon way better than Sasuke is using it right now because at least Naruto has chakra and he's able to utilize his chakra to the fullest extent, right? So you know, I think Sasuke is just a nothing burger character at this point, and I don't really blame Sasuke. You can't really blame Sasuke because, again, this is fiction. This is somebody writing this story right they're writing everything that's happening you can't blame the characters right i mean it's fun to do it and i do it sometimes i don't really mean it right i'm just you know making jokes making memes but a lot of people take it seriously but you can't really blame the characters you have to blame the writers the writers are the ones who are making these decisions and i think the boat writers really need to take a step back maybe go on a break and you know just just reflect you know reflect on what they're doing to this amazing series because i think boruto the boruto series itself can go places right it can go far but i want them to take a step a step back to analyze what they're doing and to actually try to put some effort in their storytelling right you know this story i see this story going places i see this story going be beyond earth you know going multi-planetary right just going to different planets meeting other aliens you know fighting other beings maybe finally meeting the otsutsuki king you know, I, I see this story going so far you know far farther than dragon ball z right i see the story going so far but the writers really need to get their act together right i don't know if kishimoto is going to make a difference because there are a lot of plot holes in naruto and naruto shippuden so kishimoto is by far not the best writer in the world right so i don't think he's gonna save the series but hopefully him coming in will make some changes and will start to have you know some consistency as it relates to the characters but i'm not gonna hold my breath because again naruto shippuden filled with plot holes you know just like this so yeah those are my thoughts on this uh chapter i think it's the worst chapter in the entire boruto series you know maybe i'm not really remembering all the chapters and this that was just a, an unfair uh judgment but i really do think this chapter was written badly man it was this was a poor chapter and you know at the same time it was pretty exciting right the fight sequences um what happened you know here you know the twist that happened in the end it was still exciting but the writing if you look deep deeper into the storytelling right and some decisions the characters made in this um chapter you'll understand that the writing was really you know shit honestly to put it lightly so yeah those are my thoughts guys let me know what you guys thought about the chapter um do you think it was a good chapter do you think it was a bad chapter did you agree with anything i said about you know what i think went wrong in the chapter the character decisions do you think that this was the right decision for sasuke to make do you think that sasuke has been nerfed do you think that naruto has been nerfed let me know about it down in the comment section and at least you know explain why you know don't just say that yeah they're nerfed explain why you know so people understand because i think when a lot of people see these characters are nerfed they just say that and they don't explain why and, you know when you explain why to somebody i think that will maybe get the point across more um it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things because it's not like that person is going to go to the writers of boruto and change their mind and say okay you need to start writing this character good i think they've heard the story of these characters being nerfed countless times but at this point i think they don't even care you know they're just, they're just writing their story right so and they're still getting the sales so who gives a fuck but anyways i'm ranting here um this has been 25 minutes so i'm gonna cut it down um try to get you know 
get it as short as possible so yeah you know thank you guys for showing up i've been gone for a while but yeah i'm gonna try to stick around you know work has been tough but yeah that's not your problem that's mine so <laughs> i'll deal with it you know so yeah until next time guys stay safe